Morning, welcome back. It's Tuesday and um, yeah, I've got a couple of jobs to do today on a DX160 it's to service. The diffra arm is creeping in and as of yesterday morning it's got an NH3 sensor failure as well so plenty to do on it. Um, that is a way way up the road. It's a good hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes I would imagine. Um, so we'll point the van in that direction. Um, off the back of yesterday's video, um, well I'm feeling a lot better than I did yesterday anyway, that was for sure. Um, and yeah, I think the video kind of reflected because <laughs> obviously there was no title in the video until about half past seven this morning, um, until somebody pointed that out. Um, also, the music volume in the videos, it's been the same uh, ever since probably about episode 30 when I worked out how to actually turn the music down and not the whole video down. So. Um, that's not changed, but I know some tracks can be louder than others, so I'll I'll pay attention uh, a bit more when I'm editing. Like I say, last night I was just absolutely shot, like I was beat. I was so. Yeah. Um. Uh. What else was there? Oh, professional <laughs> professional. Like you're looking forward to me and the professional struggler doing something. Um. I don't think it'll be work, but um. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to hype it up too much, and then for you lot to be disappointed. So uh, we'll just uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Right. I am. Uh, I'm going to crack on now um, and uh, point the van. Oh no, I'm not. I've got some van modifications now. Um, yeah, me uh, me tyres in my van. They're down to about four mil now, so I think they're about ready for changing. I've got some new tyres ordered, I ordered them last week uh, and we'll go and uh, we'll go and get them put on see how they fare up on the motorway and a bit of back road driving and there might be a bit of off road driving so we'll be able to test them today uh, and I'll show you what I've picked so sit tight and uh, I'll catch you when I get there so here's the new tyres they are Michelin Agilis Cross Climates and they've got some meat on the treads, look. Could have done with them about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, couldn't I, when I was in the snow. That would have been a good test for them. Um, I've only really sort of came up the motorway and then onto an A road for 20 minutes or so. Um, and just sort of off the time I've gone onto here. And to be fair, this is kind of hard standing here where the timber wagons have been loading up so I don't think we'll get much of a test today but um, with those extra or those sort of deeper cleats um, there is perhaps if I was to be if I was to be completely honest with myself there is a little bit more road noise but a tiny bit it's not unpleasant and if you turn the radio on it's no different to how it used to be with these sort of more standard road tyres. Um, time will tell over the next few months if the fuel consumption goes up at all but um, I know um, a colleague of mine that does a lot of the sort of Campbelltown, Fort William and Ireland jobs um, he's been running these tyres on his van um, and he's up to 50 odd thousand miles um, with a set on like and he swears by him like um, so I says I'll just do what he's done and put a set of them on. So I'll uh, I'll show you around this machine and what all is to do now. So we've got this very tidy DX160 high track. It's on a 2018 plate. Um, so it's to get a 1500 hour service. It's only done 1500 hours, and it's in great shape. Like. Um, two or three jobs to do with it. it he phoned me yesterday, he had an engine management light. Was it yesterday? Yeah, Monday. He had an engine management light, I spoke to him on the phone, we got into the service menu, we had a look at the error codes, um, and it was saying that it had an NH3 sensor failure. Um, now, if you look, it's sort of got the original tailpipe, if you like. Um, so once I've replaced the NH3 sensor, I'll uh, trim up the exhaust tailpipe and I'll fit one of these flaps to it um, and that'll stop any sort of 
rainwater and moisture getting in there um, and I'll show you a bit more in depth about that once we get that exhaust cover off but the complaint is he's saying he's got a bit of feedback through the left hand joystick which is your dipper in and out isn't it yeah I think so huh. um, and also when he's been working it the machine's been hot the dipper arm has been falling in towards him I've just been working the machine when I got here he has been doing bits and pieces this morning with it but the oil was only 27 degrees I've warmed it up to about 40 45 it's still not quite operating temperature you're looking for about 60 to 70 degrees um, but uh, I've filled the bucket full of soil and if you look up there the dipper arm has fallen slightly you can see the clean bit of chrome there um, so I'm tempted to go for the lock valve um, but what I'll do now is I'll swing the arm over that grass bank over there and I'll take the pilot pipe off and the tank pipe off it and I'll cap them off um, and then repeat the test and see if the arm continues to drop if it doesn't drop with the lines capped then it's the lock valve if it continues to drop with the lines cap then there's uh, obviously internal leakage inside the cylinder uh, i suppose i would also cap i suppose if it still drops then i would then cap the lines going to the ram itself and if it stops dropping then i've got a leakage valve chest side if it continues to leak uh, then I've got internal leakage inside the cylinder. So, yeah, I'm hoping it's the lock valve. <laughs> uh, what else is to do? I've got the hitch, hitch to shim up, and I've got 1500 hour service as well, so we'll be here for the best part of the day. Right, I've let this sit long enough now. I'll uh, swing it over this bank and uh, we'll get a look at this lock valve. What I should have in the van is a set of fold-out steps, but I don't. So I've dug a little hole, and I'll be able to reach my uh, lock valve now. I've kept the bucket full of soil to keep test conditions the same. And um, so what I'll do is I'll cap off those two quarter lines, cap off the valve block, and then uh, we'll lift the arm up just on the main boom, and we'll see if it continues to drop. So you can see I've got them uh, capped off. I'll just lift the boom up now. The ram is sort of fully in the way, so it'd be dead easy to see if the arm creeps. Um, there might be a little bit of movement initially, but uh, it should stop and stay still now. It shouldn't creep, is what I'm hoping for. That way we'll know it's the lock valve. creeping in the bucket there and I watched that time lapse back but that's to be expected there's no lock valves on that that'll just be uh, allowable permissible internal leakage either in the ram or the valve chest so great what I'll do is I'll uh, put the arm back down put the pipes back on I'll take the bucket off and I'll be able to reach then off the top of this bank to um, to do the lock valve Right, so it's a nice height to work on. We'll get this lock valve changed out and get on with the rest of the jobs.
that's the valve removed. Um, yeah, I put some glasses on and I wrapped the uh, sort of fitting on here just with a, a rag. Just if there was a sudden burst or a spray, uh, the rag would deflect it. Put glasses on as well, just in case. Um, although I've taken every measure to depressurize the system, um, so when I've parked it here, turned the ignition on, raised the pilot lever and wobbled all the levers around. I've taken the pressure out of the tank. Um, I've also, when I put the arm down, I put pressure on the arm to force the ram in the way. There's also, on the end of this lock valve, there's this little Allen screw here. You screw that all the way in and that's meant to depressurize it. Um, and then when you're taking the bolts out of this flange fitting, I do it kind of in diagonals and just work it, work it steadily up and out. And even right to the very end, it felt like there was a bit of pressure there. So although you think you've depressurized everything and it's safe and you could quite easily just get a nut gun on there and just rattle them all out. I have given myself a fright once before and you only do that once. All right, we'll take this lock valve down to the van. I've got my new one sat ready to go. Um, and what we need to do is sit it up the same way and swap the fittings across. So although this is a new uh, valve block, um, once I get it on the machine, I'll just check that all these caps are tight. I'm sure this valve block also works for the uh, main lift rams as well. So you've got pilot and tank lines either side for it to be interchangeable. Um, so yeah, you just don't know if they've just been running finger tight or whether they've been dug down. So when I get it onto the machine, I'll just check all these caps. Um, and I'll also take that off and just make sure that Allen screw's screwed all the way out. It isn't sort of half compressed because that basically overrides the, the lock valve. So I'll check that as well. Right, I've just bled the new lock valve up. Um, he's gonna put the bucket on it now. He's gonna sort of clart about for a uh, quarter of an hour. I'll just grab a sandwich while he's here working that. I'm not gonna stop too long because uh, I've got plenty to do like yet. So, uh, and it is just about lunchtime. So I'll just grab a sandwich to put us on. Uh, and then uh, once I've put the new NH3 sensor in, I'll have another 20 minutes or so there while the machine does a after treatment test so I'll grab the rest of the lunch then. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's where we're up to. So he's going to um, fit the sensor and tail flap itself because he's had a bit of damage on top of the exhaust there which he wants that exhaust cover off anyway to repair so uh, he's quite happy and confident to fit those bits and pieces, so we'll leave them in the cab. We'll crack on with the service and I will uh, shim up the hitch and that'll be me done. Happy days, right? Hubs are lined up. We'll open this door. We won't because it's locked, but I will. We'll get some oil drops. Obviously, um, he's been running the machine there for five minutes or so and checked it, everything's good. The controls feel a lot more positive um, and the arm is no longer dropping. I'm just dropping all the oils now. I've got hub oils draining. I've got engine oil draining. Um, 
this would be essentially a 500 hour service plus the add blue filter again i wasn't 100 percent sure uh, what hours the machine was up to so i have brought everything but um happily we'll just need that that and that one two three four five filters um, and an exterior cab filter so uh yeah, I'll, I'll do a time lapse and uh, we'll rattle through this. All right. That's all my filters changed. Um, obviously, the uh, the customer's gonna do this uh, NH3 sensor job itself because he wants to repair that, which is absolutely fine. But I did say I was gonna tell you, I'll show you why. The NH3 sensor's gone a couple of times on this. So this tailpipe here comes down, sweeps around down to a 90. And it comes along here like this. Um, and in this section here, you've got the NH3 sensor and you've got the NOx outlet sensor. On early models, and if the, uh, if the rework hasn't been done, the NOx outlet sensor would be here and the NH3 sensor was here. Why that is, is because when they were first out, um, we were getting quite a few NOx sensor faults and these NOx sensors were going bad and that would put the machine into a D-rate. Um, so there was a revised tailpipe and essentially these sensors were swapped around and uh, that all but eradicated the uh, NOx sensor fault but occasionally we started to get NH3 sensor faults um, and it was due to the fact that on open ground like this the rain or the weather blows in a certain direction you get a lot of rain coming into the tailpipe here and you get sort of a puddle of water sat in the bottom of this tailpipe and when you start it up whether it's the sooty water or just the water onto the sensor which damages the sensor i'm not sure but it causes the sensor to fail um, so it was Balgowney up at uh, up at Aberdeen there that had most of the trouble with the weather being a bit more ferocious than what we have down here but um, they ended up putting a tail flap on it and I think that was a great success so we started to do them on a sort of fix as fail basis um, so yeah we'll just zip that bit of tailpipe off around there and clamp the tail flap to it and uh, that gives it much more chance of surviving and um, you still do get occasional but I mean very occasional uh, knock sensor faults or NH3 sensor faults and that's just the sensor failing naturally so to speak rather than with moisture on it so yeah because we did that one on that 160 before Christmas there um, and that one had a tail flap on it so yeah that's the reason why you might see some of these machines with the Perkins engines the uh, the Doosan engine ones never bothered and they've got a similar tailpipe design but they never seem to bother um, Scania engines you, you, you do get occasional knocks out let sensor faults um, whether that's caused by rain I don't know I don't know so yeah that's the that's the crack there right all I've got to do is put oils back in this machine and shim up the hitch we're flying right so I've serviced everything I started it up um, just while it was idling there and I was filling up the final drive oil thought I could hear like hear a bit of a tickety noise so I've just come up and checked the belt tension and don't know if you can hear that fan hub fan hubs away um, 
So I've got one on the van, carry one. Um, so while we're here, we're gonna replace this. Oh dear. Right, they're not bad to get out um, if it's never been off before these bolts are locked tighted in and they're really tight to get off uh, right to the last thread as was the case um, you can see all the metal dust bearing dust on the inside of this um, inside of that belt drive and it's the bearing in the end of here that's failed unfortunately So yeah, I've got a fresh one on the van. I used to do a lot more of these than I've done lately, like. Um, so, but anyway, once they change, the should be okay. I'll get this changed out, and uh, it doesn't take much putting back together, like. I think probably from sort of cracking the first bolt to putting the belt back on and starting it be about an hour hopefully so yeah bugger like That's that, uh, all done, back together. I'll uh, shim up this hitch now. So, yeah, we'll get the arm into it. It's uh, 10 past 3 and I'm going to head back down the road towards Carlisle. The salesman of mine would like uh, a little one ton high tip dumper, just quick check over, he might have a customer coming to see it so we'll have a look over that when we get back down. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I feel like I've been the bearer of bad news on that job, it's just been one thing after another. But it's like he says, you know, um, better to have been noticed on the service as opposed to you know that fan hub there if that went neglected um, I have actually seen the fan depart from the engine and go through the uh, radiators or the oil cooler one of the two or worst case both so you know something like that it's, uh, it's, well, it's like he said I would have just put the filters on and cracked back on with the job but uh, I just heard when it was ticking over there, just a bit of a, it's like a bit of a tappity tappity noise. Um, so hopefully we've saved, saved money by spending money. Anyway, I'll head back down the road now and uh, I'll probably catch you tomorrow. We'll see, we'll see. Hiya, yeah, it's Wednesday morning. Um, I've just spent the last sort of hour and a half or so in the workshop office. I've had a bit of admin to attend to and a couple of, um, bits and pieces to download. I'm going to a DX225-7. It's actually the one that I serviced, I think it was this time last week, um, with the camera on the front grill that was, the plug was damaged. Um, I'm gonna go and have a look at it for a complaint that the arm is dropping. 
Um, the reason why I'm sort of setting off a bit later than usual is I phoned site yesterday afternoon and they're going to work the machine this morning. So everything's up to working temperature um, and that'll save me a little bit of time. And it's also allowed me time to so I get caught up on a couple of bits and pieces. So yeah, that's where I'm heading today. Um, tomorrow I've got, I'm not looking forward to tomorrow, but I'll, uh, I'll leave that one as a cliffhanger for tomorrow's video, for Friday's video. Right, I'm here at this 225. Camera's still working, um, but unfortunately, hydraulic oil looks cold. I think it has been running today because the coolant temperature is sort of midway up. We'll see what sort of temperature that is. We'll have a look in the service menu. Come on, service menu. Monitoring. Uh, is it that one? Let's have a look, hydraulic temp. Hydraulic temperature 27 degrees, so it isn't exactly warm, but we'll uh, dig some fresh air for 15 minutes and see if we can get the temperature up a bit. And uh, I'll load the bucket up with stone over there and see what uh, temperatures we can make it. I've just had a crack with the lad there uh, that drives it. Um, He's actually done a great job. What he's done is he's put a, like, fitted his phone up here somewhere. Um, and he's got a time lapse of it. Um, so when he's been lifting uh, manhole covers in and uh, concrete piping, um, you can see when he's holding a load, he actually gets out the cab at one point and the arms just slowly dropping. So um, he seems to think it's on the dipper. Um, he's sort of, uh, phone sort of captures sort of the the what he's lifting rather than which part the boom's moving so yeah what I'll do is I'll warm it up and it'll be a similar kind of operation to what we did yesterday um, we'll get it warmed up temperature I'll load the bucket up um, I'll, I'll use my phone as a time lapse and uh, we'll be able to determine over a 10 minute period which uh, function is uh, is dropping? So that's my plan. I'll uh, warm this machine up. I'm frozen, absolutely chittered. It's cold up on this hilltop. It is. Um, yeah, I'll get this heated seat on. Look. Try and get warmed up. Right. I'll uh, catch back up with the air once I've got this machine up to temperature. Right, I've got the oil up to 57 degrees. I'll scoop some of that sand up. It'll be more dense and heavier probably um, and then I'll stretch the arm out we'll put it on a time lapse and see what is moving Well, I haven't watched that time lapse back, but I think the results are pretty obvious. The bucket is now nearly on the ground. That's after exactly 10 minutes. And you can see the dipper arm has came all the way out that far. So what I'll do now is uh, I'll swing the boom over that heap of sand. I'll climb up that heap of sand. And we'll block off the uh, pilot and tank lines, just like yesterday. Um, and. Uh, I never emptied my van this morning. I knew there was something I should have done this morning, uh, as well as what I, what else I've already done. Um, so yeah, I'll swing it over this heap of sand. I haven't got a lock valve with me today because uh, we didn't have one on the shelf. So um, it, or if, it, if it is the lock valve, then uh, we'll come back back end of the week, Friday probably, because I think I'm going to be a bit busy tomorrow, and I'm not looking forward to it. So that's what I'm going to do next.
Well, that's not really moved, has it? Um, I watched that. Um, I watched that time lapse back just to make sure. You do see a slight bit of creepage, but um, that would be within tolerance, and uh, it's probably the. If you watch the bucket, it's probably the bucket just ever so slowly curling. Um, because if you look at the top of the picture where the hammer lines are, you know, you don't see more and more of the hammer lines. So I'm convinced it's that lock valve again. Um, so I'll get one ordered up this afternoon. We should have that in tomorrow. Um, although, like I say, you're lucky if we get in tomorrow to sort it. We'll probably have to do it on Friday. I'll put those pipes back on and uh, get on to the next one. So that's me finished. Um, when I was, um, what was I doing? I, when I was sat on the machine while the second time when I had the pipes blanked off, it was coming up saying it was what in there, or that it was doing an auto region. Um, Obviously, when it comes up wanting an auto regen, you should really be working the machine until it's complete, um, rather than let it idle. So, um, should have with the lad there. He's going to come up and sort of babysit it uh, once I've gone. But I'll just put it into a fast regen there because uh, they're not going to use it for, for the rest of the day. Um, so, at least it'll be done then. Otherwise, you know, you shouldn't really interrupt them, should you? So, I've left it on a fast regen. Right, uh, I need to make a phone call now and see if we can get a couple of machines looked at for um, lawless certificates. I've got a small fleet of machines to put tickets on, so I'm the right neck of Cumbria today to get some of those machines looked at if I can find them. I don't think the camera really does it justice, but it's quite a steep little click that, and uh, you can see the new tyres are bit in well. I don't know, can't tell you now, whether or not the uh, the old tyres would have done the same job, but uh, I'm pleased with that. Right, onwards, I'm heading for, um, there's three different sites with the sound of it, three lots of machines on each site, um, they're all to get a law inspection, so we'll see what all we can get done today, and then uh, whatever we don't get done today, on Friday morning when I come back to that uh, lock valve job there I'll uh, fill the rest of my day doing what I don't get done today so productive we are being productive so paperwork day for the rest of the day I'll probably just sort of join you at various intervals throughout my inspections okay so I'm on site here um, stop for my lunch on the way through um, I've got half a dozen machines here to do a LOLA certificate. So what is a LOLA certificate? A LOLA certificate is essentially an MOT for plant. Um, a lot of sites nowadays won't let an item of plant onto site without a valid LOLA certificate. Um, and also obviously for insurance purposes as well. So um, in this case, I'm using the LOLA certificate as a template because there's a couple of items of plant on here that I'm going to look over um, and for lifting materials. Um, LOLA is basically for machines that are used for lifting things. Um, whereas I've got a couple of rollers here to look over for a safety point of view, make sure they're safe to be on site. I can't imagine there'll be much wrong with them. One's a 2018, the other's a 2020. Um, so yeah, we'll get a look over them. If I spot anything that isn't right, um, I'll maybe show you. There's also a three ton dumper here as well to have a look over. Again, doesn't really fall under lifting. Um, however, it needs to be safe on site. So just check all the safety things are in place. Handbrake works, horn lights seat belts etc so yeah that is what i'll be doing for the rest of the afternoon it involves a lot of paperwork don't do an awful lot of lola checks um not sort of the way i like it to be honest i do this customer here i do his full fleet of machines um and then i do one or two occasionally throughout the year but 
uh, yeah, this sort of time of year, it's always to do and I always forget it's to do. So, yeah, I'll crack on with this. Right, I've caught up with my last machine of the day. So we'll check everything out and then, um, yeah, 10 to 5, I'll be an hour home from here. So, not a bad day put in. I'm pleased I got around all the machines today. Um, tomorrow's looking busy. I may or may not get help from HQ on a job tomorrow um, because I've got two breakdowns at opposite ends of the patch that I cover, which isn't ideal. It's the only time you kind of come under a bit of strain. And um, yeah, if they've got somebody available, then they'll uh, send uh, send someone across to give us a hand on one or other of the jobs. So. I'll tell you about those tomorrow and you can look forward to that in Friday's video. So, thanks very much for watching and if you haven't already, please click the subscribe button, it really helps and uh, if you've enjoyed the video, let me know by clicking the like button too. Have a good evening and uh, we'll crack on with a bit more tomorrow.